Okay, here goes another. This is on the short list of like, oh boy, I wonder what this episode will be like for these ones. So this is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there is no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. And honestly, I cannot believe there's a human being alive who hasn't seen this movie at this point. Let us begin. Don't Don't look look up. up. This is a uh, an Adam McKay film, famously. I, I it's funny that like you are turning so fast on Adam McKay. Oh yeah, but like not over this. Like I, no, I can yeah. draw the line easily. That this one, I think we're gonna. I, I did some real number crunching for this. Okay. One. I promised you some some math I yeah. had done on this one, but I didn't well, specify is, what. This movie has a lot of math involved, and famously they don't love math. Famously, so. not a math. Like, oh, we didn't get into this job for math, and then uh, everybody dies but um i just want to say and we've discussed this film a bunch of times now at this point like this is a movie that is categorically not beloved Mm -hmm. i think that this is divisive i I think we both agree this is a good movie uh i'm i'm trending towards the other way after a second watch really yeah okay so i've seen it three times this point i in my heart of hearts Really strongly believe this is a good movie that is so much closer to being great oh, than it man. is to being bad. No, and I, I, I don't like to do the judgmental, um, like, oh, you're just saying this because of blah blah. Because I just think that like it's just the shitty thing that we do. It's very disrespectful. But I can't. I I have a tough time fighting uh, the inclination to be like anybody who says this movie's like bad is. Just fucking saying that to fit in because no. I really don't see how this. Is so a bad I don't think movie. it's bad. I just particularly don't really care for it, and uh, I think that it's. I wasn't like angry that it got nominated for best picture. I'm still not angry that it got nominated for best picture. I, um, I think that it does a lot of things well, um, and it's definitely not the best, not definitely not the worst movie that's in the best picture nominees. I just think that this movie is a better piece of commentary and a better like snapshot of current culture than it is a good movie all right so friend of the podcast spike says that like he wishes that sometimes we could call movies other things like the snyder cut he was like as long as you present it to somebody as like it's not a movie it's just like this thing you're gonna do for what is it like four hours or something like that he's like then i think people might be more inclined to watch it and enjoy it i think that's right yeah, I think I think I would put that in this in that this in that category. Okay, so uh, I'll get uh, I'll get uh, through some of the other nominations real quick before I get to the highly billed number crunching. Uh, this has four nominations. It's also up for best original score, Nicholas Bertel, best original screenplay, and best film editing. I need to pour through the other best original score uh, nominees, but. This movie, I think, has a very strong case. Nicholas Bertel, very hot in the streets, Mm -hmm. wrote a little tune called The Succession Theme. Ever heard of it? People fucking love that guy. And I think that there isn't a film in this crop that has a score that matches its vibe better. Like, I would have a tough time guessing. If you were to just give me, like, this movie and be like, all right, make some music to it. I don't know that I would necessarily go with some, like, really snappy jazz, but it just works so well yeah it's it's uh there's like a lot of chaos and yeah so it kind of jazz, jazz has chaos to it so i think that it's you're probably onto something there okay this is the lowest rated tomato meter score of the best picture nominees and one of the lowest ever for such a film wow all right what did, where, where, where are we drive my car 98 coda 95 power of the dog 94 West Side Story, 92, Licky P, 91, King Richard, 90, Belfast, 87, June, 84, Nightmare Alley, 80, Don't Look Up, 55. That, I mean, that's insane. It is not a 55. So, okay, that's, that that makes me feel good. I think that it's closer to in the 80s range than it is to, like, and, and like, if, if we're to say, if we're to take all these other ones as gospel and say drive my car is high 90s coda's mid 90s licorice pizza's low 90s belfast is like high 80s which that actually made me feel good because people fucking love belfast and i feel like by thinking it's like a b-ish movie 
I'm in the wrong, but that at least makes me feel a little validated. I if all those things are true, I'd say like yeah, like don't look up is quite a bit worse than Coda, and like it's a bit worse than Licorice Pizza. So if those are in the various nineties, give me like. 82. An 80 or yeah. like an 82 or something for Don't Look Up. But that's a grade, not necessarily like a, how many. Again, this is a very divisive movie. Right. And, uh, and you know, I understand why certain people don't like it. I think it goes back to uh, I think it goes back to like your review of Winning Time where Adam McKay does a lot of the, hey, we're being funny thing. Yeah. I think that that applies to this movie more than it applies to Winning Time, although we're only an episode in mm. to Winning Time. But there's a lot of like, hey, we're being funny right now, talking about the current climate of, of culture without actually making funny jokes. So that so I think that, that that's like word for word my critique of Winning Time. I cackled at multiple points in Don't Look Up when I was rewatching it yesterday. The scene where they are in the control room for the launch of the Ron Perlman mission to kill the asteroid mm-hmm. and uh, the, the meteor and Kate Blanchett and <laughs> Leo fucking kiss each other and they cut to Jennifer Lawrence being like, <laughs> yeah. I fucking like screamed laughing. Like, I th- mean, th- there are some, there are like, funny points, real in this movie. laugh out louds, mo- like moments. In yeah, this. but like I, I think that like those moments are sort of like isolated moments rather than the big bigger picture stuff. And like there are like t- the 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 candy gag is hilarious, mm-hmm. and that's probably the funniest like the part of this movie. Yeah, like the paying pang- yeah. the guy charging for snacks when they're yeah. free at the White House. That is hilarious. Uh, I think that that's like that's probably the best running gag that they have. I so I I was I think this movie has multiple good running gags. That's one of them. Uh, the fact that what is her name Kate Dibiaski? I know that Dibiaski is yeah. her yeah. Uh, last name. Yeah, but like the political, uh, not even just like the White House, but like the TV show and everybody like very uh, subtly constantly refers to her as like the bad guy yeah, and like crazy the like creator of this uh that those little like passing she's basically things, anthony fauci <laughs> right right exactly they're like well, she's like we like we must stop this thing that this person made made like she created this thing instead of like she discovered it so there's like running jokes that i find uh funny the number crunches don't end there though uh, because i I went long mm-hmm. on okay. on poorly viewed or poorly considered best picture noms. Recent low scores for best picture noms include Bohemian Rhapsody and Joker. Don't Look Up is worse in the eyes of Rotten Tomatoes scores than both these. Bohemian Rhapsody is a 60. Joker is a 68. Uh, 55, the score for Don't Look Up, is the lowest in years the lowest uh rated since 2011 which is a movie i've seen extremely loud and incredibly close which is like the tom hanks 911 movie okay that movie sucks shit okay it's a really bad movie uh it's the 17th lowest rated best picture nom by rotten tomatoes score ever damn so there's been a million of these fucking movies and if you're to just go by rotten tomato score which we know isn't to be taken super seriously shout out chance the rapper like, this really is considered, like, a how did this get nominated type of thing. I don't put it in there at all. Like yeah, it's, I agree. This is, uh, I was totally, I, like, expected this, maybe because it's a weak year and uh, the bar is pretty low. But I don't know if it's because it's Adam McKay and it's Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence and, like, it's a big project. But I was not shocked at all that, uh, yeah. I also think that the quality of it is not putting it outside the realm of, of best picture quality i guess yeah second longest betting odds only nightmare alley worse like this isn't going to win but if tell you what like (laughs) if i'm gonna put this on like reviewers and the public now but if this were better received if people just like fucking said they liked it instead of jumping on it and being like i was doing this it was doing that and everything like i could see people talking about this as like the third or fourth favorite yeah, I, I don't think it's 
that good. And again, like I'm kind of moving away from it because I, I defended it at first because the discourse around Don't Look Up was not great. Uh, it was quite annoying because a lot of people just didn't seem to like get what it was trying to do. Yeah. And the, you know, the satire flew over a lot of people's heads. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that bothered me. Like it, nothing really bothers me more than somebody completely misunderstanding like the intent of a movie and make, and then making that the movie's fault. Yes. In their yeah, mind. Right. Um, this is not nominated for any acting awards, but the performances in this movie, really, and I, I like revive. I think that initially when I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, Leo was fine. Whatever. Jennifer yeah. Lawrence was fine. Jennifer Lawrence was good. I think Leo was fine. Ba on, on Leo standards, by Leo standards, but Leo had some fucking like A plus scenes when he finally loses it on the show. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is like a this goes on fucking Leo's sizzle reel." I think that it's like it's it he did about as well as you could in the role I suppose mm -hmm. like it I don't think it was a movie that allowed for very much like flexing of actor abilities. Uh an oversight on our part is when we were discussing Nightmare Alley we were like Kate Blanchett in two best picture noms get it Kate Blanchett you the best who else is in this movie Ron Perlman this person Ron Perlman's in both oh, of these yeah, movies true. so I, shout out Ron I Perlman did, I did forget that Ron Perlman was in Don't Look Up like yeah. for a until I rewatched it. I was like, oh, shit, Ron Parman's in this Obviously movie. very easy to forget whether people are in this movie. Like, I forgot Michael Chiklis was in this movie. Yeah. It's very easy because it's just such a, a loaded cast. But Blanchett and Perry, I think that everybody has to acknowledge, oh are incredible I, in this movie. I want them to make, like, a, a, a spinoff movie about that show. So good. And then the scene at the end when they're at the bar, like, I love when you truly don't know what the next line is going to be. And when the world is ending, they're at the bar, and I think uh, Tyler Perry's like, so, like, should we fuck or something? And she goes, you know, I think I'd rather just drink and talk shit about people. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. She's so good in this. Obviously, She's like, great. Uh, her, her look and Mark Rylance's look are just, like, both crazy how they transform them, but... Uh, her character is so great. I always chuckle at uh, – she's like, yeah, we don't know anything about each other after she and Leo have uh, done the deed. And he's like, oh, yeah, like every time I ask you about yourself, you just tell me what restaurants <laughs> you restaurants, like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like, she's super funny. Uh, Mark Rylance is – Just an absolute So character. bizarre, yeah. but – that's an amazing character. That, that, like, is a character that's stolen straight out of Silicon Valley. Yeah, good call. Good call. Um, Streep's performance wasn't funny because, at least for me, like, it's just way too similar to something that we'd recently experienced. I mean, that you could say that about every part of this movie. It's like this movie was extremely unenjoyable. Too on the because nose. It, yeah. Extremely unenjoyable because, like, it is... Very plausible now. All of it's very plausible. And, like, that's – you released this movie five or six years ago, seven years ago, and you're like, well, this movie sucks. It's so unrealistic. None of this shit would ever happen. And now you watch it, and you're like, oh, I can't watch this. It's too fucking on the nose. Yeah. I wonder – that's a good question. If this came out seven years ago, would people like it more or less? Would they be like, this is just some, like, ridiculous doomsday shit? And now it's like, all right, so what are we doing when this happens? I don't know. That is a very good question if people would like it m more or less because I feel like there's a chance that like seven years ago people would, would be more open to it as like a comedy, as like an absurd comedy. Yeah. And now people are watching it and being like, they're taking this too far or yeah. whatever and they're like picking sides or whatever. We haven't talked about Jonah Hill who, spoiler, is the only person that survives this. Um we also haven't talked about prior to learning that Jonah Hill is the only person who survives it. We hear a great song from Bon Iver, which somehow Snubbed. was not nominated. I've got to look into, was this specifically written for this film? Or was it like, a, hey, hey, Justin, you got anything for me? Yeah, this might be able to work because I like the lyrics. Feel like th I feel like that doesn't count, though. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it shouldn't. If, if you 
debut a song yeah. on a movie that should be an original song for the movie. Let me see if like Against All Odds by Phil Collins was uh, nominated for uh, an Oscar because that was just like a song that he had. It was like Against the Odds and they were like, yo, you got anything for us? It's called Against All Odds. And he was like, cool if I just change one word? And they were like, yeah, whatever. And like Simon and Garfunkel for The Graduate they were working on a song called Mrs. Roosevelt and they were like, Hey, you got anything for us? We need something about somebody named Mrs. Robinson. So like all of those things are just like people just having shit and being like, okay, yeah, we'll like cater it a little bit towards your movie. So as long as I I'm with you, like as long as it debuts with that movie, fuck it. It's for that movie. But like, here's also a question is should the, uh, should the parameters be like, it has to be in the movie. Like, Oh, like in with like, like credits opening or... credits before the end credits, because it does feel like a little bit of cheating just to like slap a song during the credits. Yeah, because I don't know. You could have any song in the credits, I guess. Yeah. And have it not really serve the movie against all odds was indeed nominated for an Academy Award in 19. So that would suggest that Bonnie Iver was just yeah. snubbed. Yeah. Which it's a great song. Second Nature is an awesome song. I wanted to see like Beyonce and Bon Iver both brought up to the stage and been like, yo, duke like it Amer- out, motherfuckers. American Idol style. Where yeah. Like hold both both perform. Yeah. <laughs> and like they both perform their songs. And uh, tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the Academy in that situation. I, I didn't think about it, but it would be awesome if Bon Iver performed Second Nature at the at the Oscars. That'd be so sick. But he, like, he can't because he's, I mean, he's, I don't think he can because he's not nominated. Enough. If enough people take stands against the Oscars, we got to find like, it's, true. it's generally not hard to find something like a, a reason to protest the Oscars. You think Amy Schumer's a big Bon Iver guy? Maybe she can have some pull? Yeah, we haven't really spent much time on the hosts of this I did. They finally dropped a an ad for the show, and I was like, "Oh yeah, people are gonna be mad about Amy Schumer." Well, I'm just not gonna pay attention until the actual show happens because, like, whatever. Who fucking cares about the the hosts? Um, yeah. Uh, last thing or last couple things I'll say. Uh, for an Adam McKay movie, as you pointed out, uh, it only breaks the fourth wall like once, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. With the Space Force thing or whatever yeah. it is, which that makes it, it's not like over the top Adam McKay. We've learned what over the top Adam McKay can be with winning time. So I was not sick of Adam McKay after having seen this movie. I am right now, <laughs> but I don't hold this movie uh, against him. Look, this isn't going to win for anything unless it's best original score. But I think, I will say again, this is a good movie that is closer to a great movie than it is to what people have made it out to be. I would say that it is uh, an okay movie that, given the year and the context of everything happening right now and like what the, the show is, I'm fine with it being nominated. Shout out anybody who somehow hasn't seen this movie yet or been part of any conversation about it. <laughs>